Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you guys how to write a C program to implement the Simpsons one third rule to evaluate a definite integral for a given function. So on the Wikipedia page for the Simpsons rule, you can see that what is being done here is if you have a function f of x which is represented by the blue line or the blue curve, then to evaluate its integral using the Simpsons one third approximation, what you do is you approximate this blue curve using a parabolic or a quadratic function that is the red line. So this would give you a somewhat you know approximate value of the definite integral if you calculate the area under the red curve. However, if you use multiple search curves at as you can see in this particular animation on the Wikipedia page, then you can see you can approximate the even the sinusoidal curve pretty well if you are using a you know large enough number of these quadratic um, functions. So basically what you are going to be doing is you are going to be dividing the interval that is let's say you wanted to integrate the sinusoidal function within the limits 2 to 8. So you will just you know divide this into in um, this interval into many sub intervals and they will all be equally spaced with some spacing let's say h and then you will just approximate all these using parabolic or quadratic functions and just find out the area under those. So that was a brief overview or an introduction for the Simpson's frontal rule. Now I have written a separate blog post on my blog that is braggedoff.com at this link. I will make sure to add this link in the description down below so you can check it out later. So here I have you know provided the information that we'll be needing for the program and the program itself so you can check that out later. So the formula that we'll be using to implement the Simpsons one third rule is basically um, let's say f is the function that we want to integrate and it has the parameter x and we want to integrate it within the limits a to b. So the integral would be approximately equal to okay so I have mistakenly put two equal signs here however we only needed the approximate sign so that would be given by h by 3 that is why it is called the simpsons one third rule by the way where h is the spacing between the sub intervals so let's say this curve has been divided into sub intervals as you can see so the spacing between you know these two points would be called h so you you know have h by 3 times you know the f of a that is the value of the function at the lower or the initial limit then you you know uh, multiply the next value that is the value at the next point that is f of a plus h by 4 then you have f of a plus 2 h that is the value of the function at the third point being multiplied by 2 and so on so another way to look at this would be um, you know here this equation that is you have h by 3 multiplied by the value of the function at the lower limit the value of the function at the final limit that is f of b and then you will be multiplying all the you know uh, you will be I mean finding the value of the function at all the sub interval points and then you will be multiplying the, those by either 4 or 2 so you are multiplying the value of the function at the you know points within the interval by either 4 or 2 now how to decide which ones are being multiplied by 2 and which ones are being multiplied by 2 so that is the crucial part so that is basically just easy to see that whenever the index is you know a multiple of 2 then you are see, you can see that we are multiplying the function by 2 however if the index is not a multiple of 2 then it is being multiplied by 4 so that pattern will be used in our program and here x1 basically means f of a plus h so here I have defined that xi equals a plus i h so x1 means a plus h so a plus h so then x2 means a plus 2h and so on and the step width or the interval width sub interval width h is basically the final limit minus initial limit divided by the number of intervals and I already told you that as you increase the number of sub intervals then you will be able to get a much better approximation to your function so that is enough of an intro or an overview for this uh, algorithm you should have already even read about it if you're watching the tutorial on how to write a program but still I decided that I'll provide this overview for the sake of the tutorial so that you you know don't get confused when I write the program so finally if you write the program just head over to your favorite you know text editor or the IDE that you use for C language and begin your program so let me just add a small comment regarding the you know program so we are creating the Simpsons one-third rule
right? All right. So you begin by just including the necessary header files. That is the standard input output file. And then you create a function that is to be integrated. So let's call this function f and let's say it takes up the parameter x. Now the function itself has the return type double and the parameter x also has the return type or the type double. And then basically it will return the value of the function that you want to integrate. So let's say we are going to be integrating x squared. All right, or maybe x cubed. Okay, to make things a little trickier. So we'll be integrating this function. So we have defined it here. So let me just add a comment function to be integrated right then head over to the main part of the program and there will be a few variables that you will need to declare that is a the initial limit b the final limit h the sub interval spacing then what else you'll need a variable to store some values so let's call that sum and initialize it as zero you will see later on why i did this then we will have another variable interval that will store the final value of the integral and then you might need one more variable that is n to you know get the number of sub intervals you need to divide the interval in two so finally you will prompt the user to enter the limits so let's prompt that enter the initial or the lower limit um, a so this will prompt the user to enter the initial limit a then you will scan that percent lf for double and m percent a to store that in a and then again you will basically just do the same thing for the final or the upper limit so i just copy pasted that part i hope you don't mind that all right so just get that and then you will prompt the user to enter the number of sub intervals you are going to be dividing the interval into so enter the intervals now i call it sub intervals because you know a and b already divide the function into a single interval so this would technically be the sub interval so that will be denoted by n and then we will just scan that value and since it is of the type integer so we will use person d and then scan that now we have got all the necessary information from the user and we can start uh, performing the simpsons one third routine so to do that we will start a loop a for loop to be exact and it would use i as the variable so i have declared that and then i will go from one to n minus one so i equals one to i less than n so that i goes from i equal one to n minus one and then i plus plus now this loop will be performing the part of the program where um okay so this loop will be responsible for performing this sum that is from here to here so except the value of f of a and f of b this loop will be giving us the value of this whole sum that is four times f of x1 then four twice of f of x2 plus four times of f of x e so so this loop would be responsible for that so um, we'll be doing that in this loop and then um, what else and then as you can already see that i told you that i will go from one to n minus one so we have already implemented that and by the way i forgot to do one thing that is calculate the value of h so here's the formula so basically b minus 8 divided by n so now we have the value of h so now within the loop what we'll do is we will okay so we need, need one more variable that is x i'm sorry x okay so within the loop what you do is you increment x by i times h so a plus i times h and then if you will have a condition as i already told you that you need to either multiply it by four or two so if i percentage two that means i divided by two the remainder of i divided by two uh, is equal to zero then that means that we have a even index and if the index is even we know that we need to multiply it by you know two so you will store this in the sum so sum will now get initialized as sum that is zero plus twice of f of x so there's one too many parentheses there 
else basically sum would be equal to sum plus 4 times because it means that the index is not even so 4 times of f of x and f of x here x is basically a plus ih so this loop is you know pretty much complete so this will give us the value of this part of this you know equation in the variable sum now finally to calculate the integral you just make it equal to h by 3 times f of a plus sum plus f of b and that's it all right so just add the semicolon and finally print this integral value So let me just explain this once more in case you didn't catch on <coughs> sorry <coughs> so the for loop as I already told you evaluated this part of this program that is 4 times of f of x1 plus twice of f of x2 and so on up till you know f of xn minus 1 and then in the integral part we perform the this part that is h by 3 times f of a plus the between part that is stored in sum and then finally the final limit f of b so that's it that's the program now you can just go ahead and save it by some suitable name and i'll just call it simpson.c then you can go ahead and run it so we are um, integrating x cubed so the integral would be x square uh, i'm sorry x to the power 4 by 4 so let's say we are integrating it within the limit 0 to 2 so within those limits the integral would be 2 to the power 4 that is 16 by 2 that is 8 so the answer that we are expecting is 8 so let's see if we get that now as i already told you that the higher is the number of sub intervals the better would be the approximation so let's enter a big enough number that is 100 and we see okay uh, i'm sorry the answer we are expecting is 4 not 8 because the integral of x cubed is x to the power 4 divided by 4 so I guess now you know that I'm not really very good at math so x to the power 4 divided by 4 so 2 to the power 4 would be 16 divided by 4 would give 4 so you can see that for 100 number of sub intervals you get a very good value that is correct up to like six decimal places and by the way I forgot to mention one very important thing about the Simpsons one third rule that is the number of sub intervals is required to be even you cannot use any you know odd number of sub intervals because the math with which the, we arrived at this equation was derived using a, an even number of sub intervals however coming back to the program so we were able to get a very good answer for 100 sub intervals now let's try with a smaller number of sub intervals this time let's integrate it again between 0 to 2 and try it with like 6 number of sub intervals and you can see again we are getting a really good value that is correct up to like 6 decimal places so you can see that Simpson's one third rule is really like um, very good at approximating the integral however this time now let's consider a rather even uh, simple function that is x squared so i already told you that simpson's rule approximates the function using a quadratic or a parabolic function now x squared is already a parabolic function so technically this time to get the correct answer you should not even need to divide it into any sub intervals so let's say we try to integrate it from 0 to 2 with only one sub interval okay so you get a wrong answer because again one num is an odd number so you need only even number of sub intervals so you again run the program and you know okay sorry i'm so sorry all right so we were integrating x squared and x squared integral would be x cubed by 3 and within the limits 0 to 2 that would be 8 by 3 that is 2.667 or something so you can see that with single sub interval you are getting a completely exact value of the integral 
using an approximate function that is Simpson's one third rule. So it works, you know, for a single interval you can calculate and the exact integral for parabolic or quadratic functions. However, if your function is not parabolic, like um, it's something like x cubed minus 2, all right? So this time, when you run the program and you integrate it within the limit 0 to 2, now we know that the answer for x cubed was um, 4 and then minus 2. So we are expecting an answer of 2. Now let's use a very small number that is 2 number of sub intervals and you can see that we are getting a wrong answer so um, this time now increase the number of sub intervals from that all right by the way I think we got the right answer because the integral would be x cubed minus I mean x to the power 4 by 4 minus twice of x so I think we got the right answer because 4 minus 4 would cancel out Okay, so um, I think I'm, you know, not able to get my point through here, but technically this should not be, you know, I mean, I wanted to show that as you increase the number of sub intervals, the approximation gets better and better. However, it's so good that even for small number of sub intervals, it is giving such good answers for this function however this time now let's use something else like an exponential function so we will need to use the math library this time hash include math.h and by the way I'm sorry for making this video too long but I just want to get this across so this time we are using an exponential function as you know the integral of the exponential function is the exponential function itself so let's say we want to evaluate this from 0 to 1 and for a hundred sub intervals so this time you get the answer as 1.78282 because the integral would be e to the power x and you are integrating it from 0 to 1 meaning we are integrating e I mean the answer we are expecting is e minus e to the power 0 so basically 1 so e minus 1 would be 2 point the value of e minus 1 so I think the value of e is 2.718282 something like that so we can just check that out real quickly value of e so okay so finally so we can see that the value of e is 2.71828 so which we have evaluated pretty good using this program however if we use a smaller number of intervals compared to the hundred intervals that we currently used so this time let's only use four number of sub intervals and you can see finally I can you know get my point across that is you don't get the exact value of the interval for a small number of sub intervals that is 4 so you can see that we were expecting an answer that is e so 2.71828 is the numerical value for this constant and we got that with 100 sub intervals however we could have probably got that with a smaller number of sub intervals but i just wanted to get this you know difference across that is this is not an ideal way to integrate but it is just an approximation so higher is the number of sub intervals or the smaller is the value of h then the better is your approximation well that's it i mean i hope i was able to you know help you out if you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something from it then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this well that's it thanks for watching and have a great day